भागवते वासुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाया Live from Super Soul Farm, this is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily spiritual podcast with your host, Raghunath, and co-host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center in New York, Kostu Badas. Welcome to the show. It's episode 1423, 1423, sitting here on a Tuesday morning, live with Miss Mara, spinning the dials. I see Catherine A. back there walking around. And Bhakti Udi got back. The ashram is back together here. It's filling up. Ashram. Yeah. Uh, an adventurous weekend, Mr. Kostuba. I saw so I hear. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lots of shelter shows. You know what? It was it was really sort of simple and smooth. Okay. And uh, those shelter shows, they become family events. I meet the parents. I meet the kids. <laughs> I had this new rule. None okay. of this crazy stuff where people are just like doing that, whatever they call that, swing the hatchet dance where people's teeth can get that wasn't was around like, when we were around we beat no. each other up in other ways but we other, yes. that. but that swinging and kicking i was like if you want to do that we we have a place for you outside <laughs> in the parking lot you can do it there everybody here is just going to stand they can bob a little and they can sing the songs that's all and people yeah that was that they did no like stage diving I, or yeah anything? You know, well, well the thing about stage diving i made a new rule with that as well um, you know, ever go to a fair, a county fair where you have to be certain height to get on the ride and every little child is oh, like, yeah. oh, you didn't make the height next year. Right now, you're going to have to go on the ride with dad. So I have this ride. Like if you were above a certain height and over a certain weight, weight. like over 60 pounds, you 60. couldn't stage dive. Well, it's like only little kids can stage yeah, dive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, you get like a 200 pound like guy who's inspired from his youth, like taking out children. No, can't have that. that People must banned. be saying, what happened to hardcore? It's yeah, like... there's a lot of new rules. <laughs> yeah, a lot of you rules. Know you know what? We we tried to go with no rules. That didn't work. That was 100 percent ineffective. That's why you got kicked out of CBGBs. You were doing the you were because I broke all their rules. You sure you, know? you should. You I got 86 lesson. from CBGBs because I broke all the rules. Learn your lesson now. Oh yes, yeah, so real soft core rules are good. All right, and that's why it's... I'm claiming a dictatorship under my authority. <laughs> but you have to, you have to change the name from hardcore to soft core. You got to change the name from youth of today to like, <laughs> you, know, um, you know, elders of today. Is a state of mind, Kastuba. Yeah, but it seems like you've lost that state of mind a little bit. <laughs> that's the point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, Gus, what's up? Gus has got something to say about that. You, you Can you tell Gus is losing his marbles? Um, I think he's just going to some deeper devotional mindset that we just don't understand. Maybe. Maybe he's seeing God. That's what I'm telling you. He's just like barking at God, like, I love he, you. He just takes all, all the devotional stuff in, and he doesn't, like, scroll, uh, you know, on Instagram. So, like, he's advancing faster than us. I know. I know. All right, let's get into this. Right. I missed I, I missed your uh, question or your Q and A. I heard you, you oh, did a Q&A. solo show. We, we did, we did. Focusing Mara was on there. Question. Mara was there, so it wasn't solo. Yeah, she. Oh, Mara, Mara was there. Okay. I said, "How was the show, Mara?" She said, "It was pretty good." I was like, "Wrong answer." Oh. Wrong answer. The whole. <laughs> I want to hear the whole thing fell apart without me. <laughs> Wrong answer. <laughs> right. I heard it was very good. And oh, then you had an interview. How was your interview? No, he didn't have an interview. Oh, didn't have, didn't have an interview. We canceled both shows. Oh, you didn't do it either? I was like, oh, because Stu has been working so hard all weekend. He didn't do anything this weekend, did you? I was working hard all weekend. Do <laughs> you want me to? Don't we? Well, man, when you start talking like that, I could I could really let loose on you. Bubba. I was walking around barefoot with his hat on. Are you ready for some announcements? <laughs> yeah, announcements. He's, he's really squirreling <laughs> off today. He's like, this is something happened on that tour. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. If Wisdom of the Sages has been helpful in your life and you'd like to contribute to our work, please log on to wisdomofthesages.com and become a supporting member of our Sage community platform. For a modest minimum $5 monthly contribution. Or immodest. (laughs) You'll get access to a wide range of live and archived classes. 
our community chat, merch, retreat, registrations, and much, much more. Log on to wisdomofthesages.com and join today. Some of you can afford $108 a month. Some of you can. I think we do for have For some one reason, donor. you're not choosing it. I think we have one donor that does that. I think we have one donor that gives more than that. Why not? I, I, think about it. If you get more than 100 think. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I think, we're, I think we're more enjoyable than Netflix. Okay. You know, it's even hard for me to even watch. Oh, he's squirreling today. Come on, enough. Or less, enough. Let's get into the nugget. I feel like we've Netflix shamed our people. That's okay. It's a good thing. <laughs> it's a good thing. <laughs> All right. Watching, nugget. Shiba. Nugget. Here's right. the nugget. It's very Jesus, interesting. I think you like it. I, think... I haven't read it yet. I, just, I literally rolled out of bed. You know what I did last night? I got no, up. No, you did. I saw uh, you wandering around for 10 minutes before the show, just like in the kitchen. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, I was looking for my hair gel. <laughs> 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 All right. So, do you, can no, you, you know read? what I do did yesterday, it? last night? I don't even want to know what you did last night. Right? I got a sleep apnea test, a home sleep oh, apnea yeah. test. Yeah. And he sent the, 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 the results he, go to the he doctor. He just sent them online to the doctor. Yeah. Okay, I want to hear what happens, how the right. thumper's doing. Okay. All right, this is from Algernon. Al, is Algernon Blackwood. It? Algernon Black. Do you know who he is? Um, well, so. you, would, you would be very interested in this guy, Regina. Algernon Henry Blackwood. Um, for, dates are 1869 to 1951. He was an English broadcasting narrator. Probably had a great voice, right? Yeah. Mm. Journalist, novelist, and short story writer, and among the most prolific ghost story writers in the history of the genre. The literary critic S.T. Josie stated, his work is more consistently meritorious than any weird writers except Dunsany's. Oh. And his... And uh, that his short story collection, Incredible Adventures, may be the premier weird collection of, of this or any other century. I want to hear, is it true ghost stories or are you just fabricated? Well, the thing is, as we read on, we find out that a Hindu, some kind of Hindu, and I see his father, good hardness, or, uh, a Hindu sage left behind in his parents' house a, a, a book that got him interested. Interesting. Uh, in, in, you know what it was? Stuff. The Gar Garuda Purana? Ever read that thing? Garuda Purana is all about ghosts. I think I mentioned Garuda Purana in the show yesterday, Ragnar. That's weird. Garuda, Garuda Purana establishes that the Bhagavatam is the commentary on Vedanta Sutra. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah. But he was also a member of the Theosophical Society. They all were. <laughs> yeah. Madame Blavatsky. Come Madame on. Blavatsky. He joined the Ghost Club. Yeah, it was. Uh, he was into Rosicrucianism. Rosicrucianism, yeah. Cultism, yeah. Buddhism. I, I would have been totally. This is your guy. With that tribe. Yeah. If I lived in that era. Yeah, you. You would have been like. Yeah, you would have been over <laughs> Madame Blavatsky's every day. <laughs> me, 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 me and the Madam would have been like this. <laughs> okay. All right. What is Al? Right, here's what he has to say. say. The wise are silent. The foolish speak. Uh oh, you set me up for this, didn't you? The wise are silent. <laughs> yeah, you the have been speaking speak, a lot today. <laughs> and the children are thus led astray. You're, you're leading the children astray. <laughs> or wi no. For wisdom is not knowledge. It is a realization of the scheme and of one's own part in it. Again. The wise are silent, the foolish speak, and the children are thus led astray. For wisdom is not knowledge. It is a realization of the scheme and of one's own part in it. There you go. You think about that, Kostuba. I think that uh, Algernon was on to something here. I think this is from, you know, from one of his stories, you know. Yeah. And um, the idea that there's a scheme at all, right? Like... Most people never even question the scheme. <laughs> is there a scheme here? There and, a scheme? and if no, so, no what's scheme. my part you, you just got to go to work. You got to move the car from the one side of the street to the other. And you got to pay your mortgage on time or your rent on time. That's the scheme. Just do that. Yeah. yeah I was thinking that, you know, there's kind of something really absurd in our legal system. 
that is that when when there's a crime committed and someone is found guilty we we uh, we kind of just set a certain year like, like okay you got to do this many years there's some flexibility right. in it like it could be longer or shorter according to your behavior sure. but really the whole thing should be okay well how long is my sense until you're reformed and when you're reformed you can come out you know it's right. like you, it's like right. they'll be to less right. reformed People than they when when they went in and were letting them out the whole thing is there's a scheme and the scheme is you're meant to become reformed and then then you could come out tomorrow if you really get it you know you know what I like when they say we sentencing sentencing you to three life sentences. I was like, what? <laughs> it's future births. You are just so bad. We're going to give you three <laughs> life sentences in case we figure out how to prolong this body. We're going to put you in there for three more times. Yeah. But but if you were in prison and your release was dependent on your reform, then that's the scheme. That's the scheme. Right. And so then, then what am I meant to learn here? What am I meant to gather from this? What, you know, that's the Groundhog Day thing, too, right? It was like uh. he was going through the same routine day after day after day until he it finally began to dawn on him maybe there's a scheme here. Mm. Maybe I'm meant to learn something. You know, you, that's a great point because, and what is the criteria for reform? Mm. Right. That's, what is, yeah, what is, what does it mean to question. be reformed? Well, you know, that that's a huge question because is it a certain amount of time? No, it can't be time. There's people that are just like crazy and criminal forever. It get, right. Sometimes they get worse in prison. Yeah. There needs to be a certain metric to measure a person's how they're reformed. It, well, you know, we're going to um, I th I would say like if I were to to describe in a nutshell, like in a simple way without getting too to involved in it the scheme of our existence in this virtual reality that we call the universe i would say you know the groundhog day is kind of onto it and the prisons are yeah you know theoretically onto it but the idea is that it has to do with your ability to think about others rather than yourself it has to do with freeing yourself of selfishness and so you could say that the scheme of this universe is that we are designed by nature we're designed to enjoy divine love that's what we're designed for but we're not ready to do that until okay. we're free of a selfish mindset and uh, this world you know the scheme of the world is meant to free us from that i like that i like okay. that a lot okay the scheme this we're going to continuously run like the fly running into the window boom 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 <laughs> i can get out of here i can i just gotta try harder you're doing the material world wrong. You just got to <laughs> try harder. Good. That's a good one. Right? Note that one down there. You're doing the material world wrong. You just got to you just got to try harder. You got to try a different method. You got to pick No. You you're not you're you're a spiritual being. Yeah. You know. Yeah, you're meant you're meant for this divine loving. You're searching for love here and there, but it's not really love you're searching for. You're look, you're searching for the sense gratification that comes in the package we call love. You really have to look for the real experience of love and to experience that it can't be experienced in a state of a selfish mindset. Mm -hmm. Just like the prison is saying, you're meant to enjoy the freedoms of the nation that the nation offers, but you can't enjoy them until you get out of this criminal mindset, which is based on selfishness. You're thinking of yourself. You're thinking to benefit yourself at the cost of others. And that's got to go. And when you get it, then you can come out of the prison. You know what some people do also? They're like, okay, I'm going to try this. I'm, this romantic love is great, great, and then it ends in disaster. Here we go again. Then I'm, I'm going to try a different partner. Yeah, she was all screwed up, or he was all screwed up, and he's a narcissist, or she's a narcissist. Oh, screwed up. Okay, try another one. And then finally, like, you know what? I can't love humans. I have to love a dog. Because it's, you know, because it's dog less complicated. Talks back to me. It completely, <laughs> it's completely <laughs> enables me to do whatever I want to do. Never, yeah. never checks me. There's no accountability. Licks my feet anyway. I love dogs. I can't stand humans. Yeah, right. We are I, I, it means so I don't want to reform. You know, yeah. I don't have to reform when I'm dealing with the dog. Yeah, we, we, we are looking to repose our love so desperately in anything, anyone. We'll even repose our love in, in vehicles or in properties or even gardens. Television show. Television show. We're, we'll repose our love anywhere except with the supreme personality of God. <laughs> right. Oh, now that gets us to the other part 
of this thing where it's saying that um, wisdom and knowledge are not the same thing, right? So even if you got tons of knowledge, you still may not have the wisdom to understand, to think, to, to deeply consider what is the scheme of the universe that we're in, mm. which brings me to, to my favorite fanatical religious atheist. Oh. Um, Bill Merritt. Bill, okay. No, I just, although I just saw something, something that said Bill, Bill Mark accepts that religion is good now or something like that like he probably doesn't believe it but he probably thinks it's good i, I haven't <laughs> checked it out yet but um but no richard dawkins oh yeah who was recently interviewed on uh i heard he got what's his name what's the guy's name again british guy uh oh uh pierce morgan pierce, <laughs> pierce morgan. and you know pierce morgan was just um he was just kind of asking the question that you're meant to ask which was like Dawkins was making this point in his book, I think, that, uh, you know, time began at a certain moment. There's a big bang. And, uh, and, and Pierce Morgan was like, okay, but what was before that? And he said, well, there was no, that's when time began. Yeah, okay, but Are you come sure? on. <laughs> Are <laughs> you, you know, like, <laughs> how can you say that there was nothing before it? And, then, and then, then Richard Dawkins began to speak in such a, a religious kind of blind faith kind of way he's mm. he, first he said that's not a you, you can't even ask that question there's no meaning to that question today's modern no science is question. their modern religion boom shelter circa yeah. 1992 there you go and then and then he said that's a question for a physicist I, i'm a biologist and that's a question for a physicist and he's saying our minds are not developed enough to even understand the answers of that question even myself uh richard dawkins was, oh in other words so it's something that your mm -hmm. own <laughs> rational cognitive faculty can't grasp but you believe it so we call that blind faith <laughs> right it's yeah like, oh it's so good, it's so, good. You know? so so it's the creation know. myth of the modern scientists yeah. like we all that's that, right. that was that's how i introduced that song in defense of reality this weekend I said, oh, oh every myth. culture has their creation myth. The Norse, very interesting creation Norse? myth. Fantastic <laughs> stories. The Greeks, really interesting creation myths. Unbelievable things. Like, fantastic. Uh, you'll hear all over the world their creation myth. But let me tell you the most fantastic, the most unbelievable creation myth that everything, every variety, every species, all of it came from nothing. What a fantastic, <laughs> unbelievable story! That and is. when you want to ask about it, you can't ask that question. You're not even allowed to ask. You're not even allowed to question that. <laughs> yeah. You just have yeah. to accept it. So maybe tons of knowledge, but no wisdom, and they're com completely blind when it comes to what's. They're saying there's no scheme. Don't even think that there's a scheme. Mm -hmm. Right? There's nothing to learn. It's all just a random mess. I, 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 the, the the thing that I really don't like about that is because they have to really separate themselves from human society. If you really want to walk your talk, like for example, if you're a vegetarian, sometimes you check ingredients on the things that you're eating. Does this have animal products in it? That okay. means, because you want to walk your talk. So if you actually believe that theory, yeah. that means things like love. They don't exist. It's just a epiphenomenon of the brain this concept of love all you are is a bunch of chemicals put together and you're just fabricating this concept of love morality um ethics um attachment to one's family in a in a nurturing way all those things are no different than say human trafficking uh kidnapping stabbing the innocent it's all the same in a world where we are nothing but bags of chemicals I think you, Sam Harris would challenge you on that. It's okay. I'll challenge him back. All you, right. my friend, are a bag of chemicals. Stop <laughs> trying to add meaning to a bag of chemicals. But, uh, uh, in the end, what you're saying is right. It, in the end. They, they can the put up arguments. It's not right? No, what I mean is ultimately this is it. What you're saying is true, and they would have. You to might admit say it. something like, "Well, if you want to have a culture and a society, yeah, they're saying we can develop our own morality, right, and so." so Right. So then, but the, your point is, it has no. It's as, the meaning of that is as random as anything else. 
as random as anything else. Like we try to come across with how to live a better life, how to, how to protect the environment, how to, you know, uh, uh, establish, you know, what a, an appropriate community does and what does a community benevolence mean? And what is, uh, this is a wrong in society. Ultimately, it's all nothing. <laughs> you know, you can't, it, it, it means nothing. You're trying to create meaning where there is no meaning. Now we say there is some meaning. Yeah. There is some meaning in society. There is some meaning. There is some scheme in ethics and morality and family and home in love and, and violence and hate and forgiveness. It does have meaning. Right. But, hmm? finish my sentence. It does have meaning, but we need to open up to hear the message. I don't know. What, what, what were you going with? I don't, I don't know. know. What was the <laughs> I sort of hit a dead end and I wanted to hear you. Okay. Just if you were listening, all right, and not just I tolerating. <laughs> I listen to you, Rogan. You don't listen to me. That's that's how this that's how this show works. Okay, don't that's don't the project. scheme here. <laughs> don't project. Okay. <laughs> all right, you ready to get into it? Yeah. Before reciting our Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, one should have respectful obeisances to the Supreme Lord Narayan. And to Narayan Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, and to Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and the Shilavi of the author. Nasta Prayeshu Badreshu Nicham Bhagavat Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloki Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtiki. By regular attendance in classes on the Bhagavatam and by rendering service to the pure devotees, all that is troubles from the heart will become eradicated. And loving service to the Supreme Lord, whose praise with transcendental songs will be established as an irrevocable fact. Om Ajnana Timarandasya Yananjana Salakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurdavena Maha. I was born in the darkness of ignorance. My teachers are opening my eyes with the torch of knowledge. They offer my obeisances at their lotus feet. Before we go on, we got a shout out to Laura Rabino, the, the jewel, the ruby oh, yeah. of Philly. Down of Philly. Philly. It's her birthday today. One of oh, our happy birthday. Members. Okay. All right. Reading from Shima Bhavatam Tom Kano 8, Chapter 1, Text 14. Yeah. Quick little recap. Quick little recap. So sure. we, uh, the question was asked at the beginning of the chapter, in the beginning of the canto, uh, from the King Maharaj Parikit, who's about to die in seven days. Now it's less than seven days. He's probably got like three and a half days left at this point. And uh, he asks Shukadeva Goswami, the great sage and narrator of Bhagavatam, he says, you've told me about all these, you've told me a lot of great stories so far. They're all coming down in the lineages of the, the ancient kings. And um, there, and those are all the, the offspring the sons and daughters, they're all coming down the, the, what's another word for offspring? What's the word I'm looking for? Like the progeny. Uh, okay. The progeny, the spawn, <laughs> spawn. litter, <laughs> <laughs> but all it come from the children of, um, the children and the children's children. So the offspring mm. of, um, of Manu that, that, that there's, you know, there's this leader of, the Mankind. universe, <laughs> practically, yeah, called Manu. It's a post that one takes, and Svayambhuva is the Manu for for the at the beginning of this universal cycle, and so these are all coming from that Manu. But can you tell me about? Wow, that's just one of the Manus. You know, there's fourteen in a day of Brahma. Mm. Do you know how long a Manvantara is, Raghuna? It's a long time. It's, it's like longer than a year. It's over three hundred million years. That's what I meant. <laughs> and, uh, much it's longer. Long it's a long time. <laughs> and uh, and time know, is relative, of course, you know, for a year for us, a year for a, it's different. It's like many, many lives of many, many flies. It's generations of flies, generations of mosquitoes. Right. Some bugs that live for, you know, a night and a day. Right. So so time, so he, yeah. he he asks him, can you tell me about the, the other Manus? And he's like, sure. Let me just share one last thing about Svayam Bhuva Manu. Mm hmm. And he shares this story about how Svayam Bhuva Manu walks away. I guess it was the end of his reign. You know, the king walks away from, from his duties. He goes out to the river. He's performing austerities. And he's chanting a prayer. It's his meditation. Mm -hmm. And his meditation 
it has to do with that the entire universe is the energy of God, mm. that his awareness is spread throughout it all, mm. and therefore the entire universe is the body of God, and therefore the entire universe is the property of God. And we should see that as part of the scheme, right? We should understand that. That's the big shift. That's the big shift. That's a big shift. Nothing is mine. Nothing Everything is, yes. is the Lord's. There you go. And part and the, of the scheme is for me to take what I have that I think is mine and use it as an offering. Instead of go. trying to like put up a fence. No, this is my land. <laughs> That's right. We can have a song that we sang every day in second grade. This land is my oh, land. This year is my land. This land isn't anybody's land. This is God's land. There you go. Okay. God's and plan. um yeah, and, and as you're saying, we should take just as much as we need, knowing that this isn't really ours. We take our quota. Yeah. And if we can live this way, and today is going to start to go into this. If we can live in this consciousness, we can live and be active without becoming entangled in the laws of karma, wherein we get stuck in a cycle of some sort of birth and death, birth and death, enjoyment, suffering, enjoyment, suffering, enjoyment, suffering. You can so see those what, cycles happen cool. within this lifetime too. Oh yeah, okay. you can see like happen within a life. day, within yeah, ten minutes. Yeah, <laughs> you just caught up in a cycle. Yeah. There's sometimes there's mental cycles that you go to, like a little. You're just like it's like you're having um, uh, uh, Groundhog Day in your mind. Right. <laughs> going on, the same things going on. Groundhog Day in my mind, laying in bed, one. thinking it's the same. Coming up with fresh stuff here today, Mary. Note that down. Go, That's why I need. I need to get away. Sing some punk rock with my friends. <laughs> come, come back, and then I'm a whole new, uh, born again, okay. <laughs> spiritual being. All right, so we're on text fourteen, I believe. Is that correct, Mary? Yeah. Yep. yep. Canto eight, chapter one, text fourteen. Yeah. Therefore, to enable people to reach the state. Whoa. Roganaut just froze up big time. Right when we start to read the Bhagavatam, he freezes. What is that? <laughs> we got a ton of banter, 20 minutes of banter. And right when he starts to read Bhagavatam, he freezes up. Um, and he seems to have frozen pretty hard. I don't even know if he's frozen. So let me begin to read the verse, text 14. So again, this is Manu. He's just said that the entire universe is the Lord's body, that we should take only our quota. And he continues, therefore... To enable people to reach the stage of activities that are not tinged by fruit of results. In other words, to be able f to bring people to the stage where they can act in this world without getting caught up in the laws of karma, the action and reaction cycles. Great saints first engage people in fruit of activities. Very interesting point. Kind of goes back to something we were talking about yesterday. I'll, I'll I'll get to that. For okay, we got Rogonath back. He'd be back here, Rogo. Sorry about that. You froze about hard that. on us. Fro you I gotta, froze hard. I, I cut me out. Cut me out. You, what do you mean? I cut you out? It just like dropped me. My whole Zoom turned off and back on. Well, you were okay. frozen before it did. All right, you want to start it again? Uh, what are we talking about now? I'm Text fourteen. Text fourteen. To enable. Therefore, Therefore, to enable people to reach the stage of activities that are not tinged by fruit of results, great saints first engage people in fruit of activities. For unless one begins by performing activities as recommended in the Shastras, one cannot reach the stage of liberation or activities that produce no reactions. I, I tell you what, Rogan, why don't you read this again, but instead of saying fruit of results or reactions, just put the word karma in there. Okay. Therefore, to enable people to reach the stage of activities that are not tinged by karma. Yeah. Great saints first engage people in karmic activities. Work. Yeah, karmic work. Activities. For unless one begins by performing karma work, as recommended in the Shastras, one cannot reach the stage of liberation or activities or karma or whatever, that produce <laughs> no karma. Right. right. So what the great sages do is they see you on your bullet print train heading on that express train to hell okay <laughs> and they see he's, and they, Mary, he's really confident now <laughs> he's thinking instead anything that comes out of his train. mouth is incredibly profound now he's <laughs> he's flowing okay and they what they do is they take that bullet train and they just like shift it a little so it's going a little off course they're not saying get off the train no they're not saying get off and they're not even saying like slow it down they're just like shifting it 
But and then the trains slowly... don't really shift so much. They have these tracks that you can't get them off. Well, they do. well, okay. Don't use my bullet train analogy. Use okay. my. How about the Concorde? Remember the Concorde? Okay, Concorde that plane yes. fly to Paris in an hour. Yes. They just take it and make a little bit off course. A little bit shift. Okay. And when you make a little shift, even a five percent shift from where you take off, by the time you land in Paris, you're landed in the Canary Islands. You're landing right. somewhere completely different. Right. Well, you know, Raghunath, we talked about this yesterday because if we if we read this verse, it's saying to enable people to get to a stage where they're not entangled by the law of karma, great sages engage people in karmic work. Yep. Well, that doesn't seem to make sense. For unless one begins by performing activities as recommended in the Shastras, there's the key. Mm -hmm. One cannot reach the stage where they act in this world without getting karma coming back at them. So it's saying people are acting in this world. We can't, as you're saying, we can't shut that down. It'll be too much of a hard stop for them. Cold turkey is just too much. But what we can do is say, okay, you want to work to get results in this world. You're doing this, you're doing that. You're trying to get more enjoyment out of life. These ancient texts show you how you can actually do it and be far more successful at it. You, you need to, there, and it all has to do with there's a scheme. Learn yeah. to work with the scheme. Everything yeah. that you got is get, being provided by the gods and the goddesses. You got to recognize that. You it's like what a parent them. does with a yeah, kid. Yeah, exactly. They're sort of like, oh, you want to play a video game? Yeah, let's play this vocabulary video game. <laughs> like, Wait a second. <laughs> or, or like, you know, Sesame Street or the electric company, these like kids shows. Yeah. And you still got the cartoon characters. You still got the puppets. Yeah, yeah. But it's like a game. It's like yeah. fun. It's a right. learning. It's like Sesame Street. Like what? It, or or do you remember like um, those? There was cartoons in the morning on Saturday morning, but then there was like these things to help you learn about the American Constitution. Conjunction, like, junction. What's your I'm function? just a bill. Yes, I'm always a bill, and I'm sitting <laughs> here on Capitol Hill. Schoolhouse Rock. It was called. Schoolhouse that. Rock. Right. Yeah. And you learn about stuff like that in conjunction, junction. What's your function? Looking upwards and you're, phrasing. If you're anywhere south of 45, it. you're not going to understand <laughs> these. But every Saturday morning, you'd sit at your TV for hours and watch cartoons. But then they were smart. Like, how can we educate these kids? That's so right. it got to this point where, like, this our kids are getting dumb. All they're learning, <laughs> all they're learning about is violence with these cartoons. We got to teach them something. So they taught us like okay. history, economics, you know, vocabulary, politics, all through little cartoons, and it works. Okay. I'm still singing those songs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you know, and you you're, you're using this parent and child analogy. I used a, I used a parent. And child analogy yesterday that relates to this. You can take this and you can run with it if you want, or not. Okay, ready? But we'll revisit it. it. And, and we said because sometimes the shastras seem to be saying one thing, and then they shift, and, and then they seem to be saying another thing. You know, we have the we have these Vedic texts, the the the, the four Vedas, which are teaching all about how to work in this world mm -hmm. and cultivate good karma. Mm -hmm. And and then when you get to the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna saying like, if you go to the second chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. There's like a whole group of verses, texts. You begin with text 42, text 42 through 46. Krishna saying, men of small knowledge mm. are very much attached to the flowery words of the Vedas. Oh, hold it, but I thought the Vedas were like good, you know, which recommend various karmic activities for the elevation to the heavenly planets, result in good birth, power, and so forth. Being desirous of sense gratification, opulent life, they say that there's nothing more to this. In the minds that are of those that are too attached to this, they never develop samadhi. You know, they never find this deeper peace. He said, and he says the Vedas deal mainly with the three modes of material nature. Arjuna, you have to become transcendental to this. So, Krishna, you know, the the, the Vedas are being recommended here, and then we're being told not to. Mm -hmm. And it's but it's all coming from the same compassionate, evolved source of knowledge. You know, through Vyasadeva's teachings. So how is that? And, and I said, it's like, if you have a little, like a girl, when she's, she's going to go through different stages of how she relates to boys in her life, potentially. Yeah. When she's a little girl, she may say, I hate boys. They're mean. Yeah. Right. And her parents, who are the source of knowledge, the evolved source of knowledge, will say, no, no, boys are good. You know, I, I get it that sometimes they do mean things, but don't hate boys. Boys are good. So the message is boys are good. Right. Boys and are then, not good. 
and and then later when you're a boy you know what i'm talking about (laughs) now now that's the unevolved (laughs) message i'm going to share less than fully evolved message and then when she hits the teenage year she's she's infatuated with boys and the same source of compassion and knowledge is saying boys are dangerous don't get in the car with boys don't yeah. you know are you gonna, any boys gonna boys. be at the party or any yeah. boys gonna be there yeah any older you know, boys gonna be, and yeah. she's like no 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 this but he loves me no no he no, doesn't he does love not you. love you <laughs> he's exploiting you okay <laughs> so it's it's the same source of knowledge saying something different what's That's being, a great analogy friend I'm glad you like it and then there's a the third it. stage where she's fully evolved and she's and then she can enter into a deeper relationship with a boy when she truly understands like when she has deeper Stuba. knowledge about life and, and, and some credit to Stuba on the takeaways for this a good that's a good one there yeah. right yeah that was okay. very good same like source that. of knowledge different, different instructions according to their evolution it's all moving towards the same evolution right so sure. here we're it's being said that these sages they're beyond karma they're they're no longer interested in the things of this world they're not trying to cultivate good karma to get good things of this world but they're engaging people in cultivating good karma because it gets them um working with the scheme it gets them to understand there are these books that explain the scheme if i follow the books better things start to happen yeah and once you get into that scheme then you begin later you begin to hearing more from that same source you realize what first is saying hey good karma is good and then when you get a little further down the road it's saying good karma is bad <laughs> right all the karma you want to let go and that comes in the upanishads we're saying you don't want the things of this world that, that that's never going to satisfy your deepest spiritual uh nature there's something beyond that but you get them started by bringing them to these to 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 being dharmic to being good to cultivating good karma okay Beautiful. and that's what a king is very much that's very much the king's duty, right? Because you're dealing with the common people. Mm. Hey, we got to start operating on a higher level, come up to this level. Otherwise, bad things happen. We want good things to happen. Wisdom of the sages. We believe in the divine right of kings. <laughs> we do. <laughs> we do, in a way. We just don't have any good ones. That's the problem. <laughs> All right. Text 15. If you talk to people about that, they're like, they used to think that kings had some connection with God. <laughs> they did. I, 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 I had arguments with my friends who are like very political. And they're like, "Thank God we broke away from England." I was like, "Well, some kings did have divine." <laughs> like, okay, that's a good king. <laughs> so now the question may be, but but doesn't work lead to bondage? You know, you're you're you hear this is recommending work, but right. but isn't that a pro- isn't work in this world problematic? Isn't that what the Upanishads say? So. Now there's an answer to that. Text 15. Text 15. The supreme personality of Godhead. The great, what a great phrase. The supreme <laughs> personality right. of Godhead. <laughs> I, you know what? Boom. Prabhupada is coming up with that phrase. Here's the deal, right? You have all of these Vedic texts, and the fact is they are all over the place. They're speaking to people on all different levels. They're, right. you know, and then... And then these brilliant bhakti sages, they had the way to say, look, we can put it all in order for you so that you can see. The, that's what we're just talking about all day yesterday. We're gonna, you can see that it's meant to bring you through stages of evolution. You line them up all right, and it makes perfect sense. Mm. And where it all leads to is at the end, there is a supreme source of everything, and it's a person. Imagine if Madame Blavatsky <laughs> and, you know. If they had uh, Prabhupada. Uh, oh, yeah, they found Prabhupada's Gita. Kostu was just walking the streets of St. Petersburg and distributed a book to Madame Blavatsky. Is that where she lived in St. Petersburg? That's where she's from. Right? But she lived in America, America, right? Oh, she came to America. But she was in upstate New York, right? Well, no. No? I, I'm sure maybe or Connecticut busy. or something? But, but it was one of those things where if you were like of the higher intellect, uh, uh, elite, wealthy elite, you were into theosophy – or then you got into Rudolf Steiner, Anthroposophy, or you were into some oh, Indian sadhus. A little Anthroposophy? A little Anthroposophy, perhaps. Oh, oh what you got is. there, Mary? Look at this woman. Just look at her face. She's a mystic. <laughs> Madame Blavatsky. Yeah, she was a Russian. I mean, I guess a that Russian much. American mystic. She was born in Ukraine. Oh, she's born in Ukraine. Ukrainian. Okay. okay. She gained international following as the 
primary founder of Theosophy as a belief system. Russian American, Russian and American, and American mystic. mystic. Yeah. An author Where does she live in America? Connecticut? Of, huh? Connecticut? Where does she live? She died in London. Let's see. She was born in what's now Ukraine. She visited Europe, the Americas, and India. That's of course she did. In New York City, she founded the Theosophical Society. I wonder where that was. The Theosophical Society, they're all over. That's where Pumpkin Hollow, that's the Theosophical Society. I know. You know, I have a real good friend that was a theosophist, right? Oh, um, Satan, satanic guy? Lauren, the guy Lauren, remember, who passed away? Oh, Lauren, yeah. Lauren was such Yeah, but the guy's from man. Pumpkin Hollow. From Pumpkin Hollow. He, he one day... We we would do these retreats at Pumpkin Hollow every year, just these Which is, retreats. They were great. It, it was a Bakhti retreat center we rented out, but it was um, it was a retreat center that we rented. But out. it was owned by the Theosophical Society. They had a great library there, right? Yeah, and, and, and a great mystical library. Yeah, yeah. You you could have spent a lot of time in that library. I, there was like if it was all audio books. Was you like would never in leave the library going through this stuff. <laughs> and and we would we would have these um, retreats every year. They're great people. And um, you know who I met this weekend or last weekend? Fatima. Fatima. Oh, get out. Yes. She's like, I think of you. You and Kostuba and Maharaj all the time. Wh where does she, she live? Person. She lives in New Jersey. She's happily married. She's super cool. Get out. I thought yeah. she was like way far away, like in Montana or something like nope, that. She's in New Jersey. We got to reconnect. OK. So in any case, the, the, the one of the men that ran it, he was just like a sweet, soft, humble, spiritual man, Lauren. And his wife. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> no. What? Her wife was always one after my kids. Caroline, right? Caroline. Yeah, yeah, she's she's very, very nicely. Um, and so then Lauren, one day he took me to the train station. Yeah. And he was just open up because we would have these great retreats, incredible kirtans every night. They have this nice, oh, big, beautiful man. barn. That's and right. uh, little son did his grain ceremony. He crawled right. over to the Bhagavad Gita and just put his hands on the Bhagavad Gita. That's right. That's what did it happen, right? Now. And um, and and <laughs> you're squirreling my squirrel, <laughs> and <laughs> squirreled my squirrel. <laughs> Go ahead. And and um, so he loved it, and he would say, "You're our favorite people. Every year, we're waiting for you guys to come back. We really love it, and we really love your retreats." And this was very towards the end of his life. It was probably the last time that I saw him. Right. And what did he, he say? He was driving me in the car, and he said. He said to me, someday, I hope I can be like all of you bhakti people. Oh, really? And I said, well, you are like us. You know? And oh. he said, no, 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 no. No, you, you people are really on to something like that. He was, he was oh, such really? a sweet man. But he yeah. did. You know, because you think about it, the type of people that rent it out at a retreat center, people rent it for corporate reasons, or people rent it out for, you know, uh, weddings. I mean, I think there are a lot of spiritual things, too, but I think he, he felt the power of bhakti, you know? I mean, we had real joyous j dancing and singing, and we really did in oh, great was... courses, great classes. And um, you would every Saturday night of it, you would give this talk that would be like a stand-up routine, a lot of, <laughs> with deep wisdom. But you would somehow every year you really were on for that thing. It was it was like a, <laughs> like we were crying, laughing. <laughs> oh my God, Bridges Sundarirada just posted a picture of yeah. My son Little reaching Tarun. for the it's a great ceremony if you're new to this, like your baby's first grains that they eat. So previously, the chill child is only eating breast milk or maybe some fruit. But the very first grain they eat, they have a ceremony where the guru gives the grains to the baby. Then they mm -hmm. then they set up like a, like a pile of money or a pile of gold or a pile of jewels. And then they put a holy book like the Bhagavad Gita. And it has and, a choice which one is going to crawl to. Yeah, he's got to crawl. And, and everybody's cheering, go for the holy book. Go for the holy book. <laughs> and he crawled right over and just slapped that holy book, slapped there the Bhagavad Gita. Yeah. And everyone yeah. cheered. That is a great photo. Please send that to me, Braja. Oh, uh, yeah. Let's keep it going. We only got four, okay. six minutes left. Text 15. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is in full opulence by his own gain. He acts as the creator, maintainer, and annihilator of this material world. In spite of acting in that way, he is never entangled. Right? You think if he acts, he's going to be entangled. Because we're acting, we're entangled. Why isn't he? Hence, devotees who follow in his footsteps are also never entangled. 
tangled. There you go. There's it's a connection. Simple. Part of the scheme. Get, that's part of the scheme. There is a way out of the entanglement. But you if you move. act in, if you connect your consciousness to the source of the scheme, hmm. you pass through the scheme without all the negative effects. Sure. Like if you're walk, if if you're walking through, if someone's walking through the snow, and I walk behind them, put my feet in this, oh, in the same footprints. It just seems very smooth. But if a hun- if, if 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 and you could get a hundred people doing that. But if everybody's just walking through the snow, it's just like a big mess. But we're walking and we're trying to keep right in line with the Supreme Personality of Godhead and the Acharyas. Make it very pretty. Walk through the snow. Yeah. That's right. He op- he operates beyond karma because the car- the law of karma is his own, and he just and he operates just in the state of divine love. And if we learn to connect with that, then we don't need that law to reform us. We're we're reformed. We're operating in a reformed consciousness. Mm-hmm. We're operating in harmony with the scheme. We're operating with wisdom. Text sixteen. The supreme personality of Godhead, Krishna works just like an ordinary human being, yet he does not desire to enjoy the fruits of work. He is full of knowledge, free from material desires and diversions. He's free from squirrels and completely (laughs) independent. As the supreme teacher of human society, he teaches his own way of activities, and thus he inaugurates the path of real dharma. I request everyone to follow him. So that's Swami Bhuva's last the end of his meditation. That's right? his yeah. final. Everyone get with the scheme. You, you'll do yourself such a favor. You know, c- connect with that source of divine love who operates in divine love beyond the penal system of the law of karma. Penal system, that's good. That's and, good. Even, <laughs> you, right? and even, it's like penal gland, right? Or something. Like the penocle. <laughs> okay. So if you operate in harmony with, with that, you will operate, meaning letting go of your desires to be selfish and take the things of this world for yourself and operating in a mood harmonious with your nature of divine love. And, you know, and this is, and, and therefore th- these ancient texts, Bhagavad Gita kind of says that same message, right? That work has to be done as, as an offering to Vishnu. Otherwise work will bond you. Great verse, say it. Uh, text uh, three nine: Yagnarta karmano nyatra lokyam karma bandhana. That artam kartam kaunteya mukta sangha samacharaha. You become work, free from the entanglement. Right. Mm. Work, work must, be, must done be done for Vishnu. For Vishnu. Otherwise, work causes bondage in this material world. Oh, you know, it's very interesting because Prabhupada translates the word yagna here, which is generally translated as sacrifice. He translates it as Vishnu because there's a Vishnu incarnation called yagna. That's interesting. And we just heard that message here, the same message about how if you work uh, in harmony as an offering, you know, then you don't become entangled. And right now, I think we're about to hear about the son of Swami Bhuvamana, whose name is Yagna. Mm-hmm. I think we hear about that Yagna incarnation next or something like that. There's a connection here. There's a connection. It's okay. coming up. Interesting. We'll hit it tomorrow. I think we got to stop. Good, call, right, good, man. good one today. Good one. Are you happy? You feeling good? Yeah, I'm a little Let's exhausted. see how long we can keep you in the exhausted. groove before you get grumpy, before you get annoyed, before you. Get... <laughs> Forgive you me like... for having emotions, the <laughs> robot boy. Look how happy he is with himself right now. You <laughs> <laughs> like it was C three PO over here. <laughs> Master <laughs> Rugged Off. Okay. Let's go on. The whole scheme is for our reform. That's right. Uh-huh. Scheme. <laughs> By nature, we're designed to love. That's right. That's nice. That's like nice. That. that is a shirt. By nature, we're designed By nature, to we're love. designed to love. Boom. Oh, okay. The most fantastic creation myth is that everything came from nothing. It's quite fantastic. <laughs> Everything comes from nothing. Really? Yeah. Unbelievable. It just evolved from nothing. How does anything evolve from nothing? I don't know, Ragnar. Doesn't make sense to me. Me neither. Great sages can divert the course of our bullet train. Mm-hmm. 
Just like a painting without a painter, a creation without a oh, creator. Here he goes. Here he goes. Come on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here's a painting. Where'd it come from? I don't know. Nowhere. Nowhere. You're not you allowed can't... to ask that. Not. A... You can only ask an artist that. You can... <laughs> You're not allowed to ask that. That is the best. Talk about uh, freedom of speech. <laughs> There's certain things you can't ask. You just you have can't to accept. ask that or, question. You start talking like that, it's hate speech. Kostuba. Oh, okay. Excuse me. Really? I was just curious. Learn to work with the scheme. Work with the scheme, Ruggenoth. Don't fight the scheme. Work with the scheme. Okay. The same source of knowledge gives different instructions based on our evolution. It's going to speak to you one way at this stage. Then when you reach the next stage, it's going to speak to you another way. One way or another. Come on. <laughs> start by being dharmic and cultivating good karma. Okay. That's where you start. Start. You want connect to get past our, that. Yeah. Connect our consciousness to the source to avoid entanglement. There you go. Do yourself a favor and get with the scheme. That's called yoga. Reconnecting, and getting with the scheme. Doing the yoga scheme yoga scheme today. <laughs> and rules are good for youth of yesterday. Ouch. Oh, <laughs> oh everybody take pot shots at me on Tuesday what about morning. Come what on. About we're doing the material world wrong. Yeah. That's right. Get rough. with the scheme, youth. We're all young. And our Lord yeah, is a quotient. young cowherd boy. Thanks I mean, everybody maybe, for joining us. Ruggenoth, you may be on to something. Like, if you're going to keep doing a hardcore into your late 50s and 60s, maybe you just have to change the rules a little bit to keep change it dignified. Rules. Otherwise, it's silly. You know, it gets to listen. So, and it's dangerous. It's, it's dangerous. dangerous. It's, it's very dangerous, dangerous too. <laughs> it's very dangerous. Like I also said, no touching. Okay? <laughs> There's always one guy trying to touch me. No, no touching. Huh. You can touch me when I was Did a little you really bit say more that? bendy. <laughs> yeah, the guy's just reaching up and grabbing me. No, no, uh -uh. no touching. No touching. <laughs> <laughs> no ring necking this. Hey guys, you didn't get my book. Time to do some. It's early Christmas shopping. Get a book and get one for a friend. What a great way to share with people what you're into. Get a book for a friend. Punk to Monk, get it wherever you get books. Or um, Barnes & Nobles oh. has it. Today's the Barnes last day. Today's the budget for Nima, by the way. Can you let me finish my pitch and then you oh, can do your sorry, pitch? I thought you had it's One pitch at a time. I thought you had Okay, go ahead. Monk to monk, get one for a friend, get a bunch for a friend. You already Boom. said that. All your Christmas shopping is done. Now, if you know someone really like, no, no, I'm already into this stuff. I don't need Raganoff. I'm going to step right over Raganoff's head. That's okay. You can get him a whole set of Bogotas. Yeah. But buy him a whole set of Punk to Monk first. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, but punk today, if you want to uh, give a set, or if you want to get a set for yourself, all you have to do is reach out to Malini. She'll get it for you.